What's up, Reavers? Welcome to Alex Poro Corals. This is my video log where hopefully you can learn from my mistakes. So come check out the crazy reefing madness. Okay, so this is my 20 gallon quarantine system update. And the concept is that I have a system here that I can, um, everything that comes in, boom, two and a half months. And the idea is to mainly prevent the ick and especially the velvet out there, guys. Look out for the velvet. That's what it's all about. And so, yeah, that's right. Everything that goes in here, every single coral that I get, piece of live rock, every single piece of gravel, every little drop of water goes through here. Shrimp. I've had uh, about 10 snails I put in here, boom. Yeah, they go in, you just have to have the discipline to run a separate system and then simply wait the two and a half months, put something in here, boom, and then have the patience to move them over to the next, to your main display. So, so good so far with that. Other than I would say that I would definitely, this is just a 20 gallon system, so definitely would have, uh, it would be better to go a little bigger, at least 40. I would probably even go even bigger, you know, like I would said, another 100 gallon would be good for me. But yeah, I mean, just two separate systems. Boom, here it is. I got the summer fans going on up here. I got the Aqua Max. I got the protein skimmer. And also got over here this um, phosphate. I've been adding the trisodium phosphate. That's right. I'm a refig man. It's just crazy. Uh, crazy scientist over here so let's check it out i got the trisodium phosphate this is by the loud wolf that i got off of amazon and there it is that's what i can tell you is that yeah the four grams per liter of it will get you quite into the ball range there of uh, 0.33 parts per million that's right uh point um yeah 0.3 or 0.25 parts per million when you add a one liter or one milliliter of your solution right into one gallon uh, to be able to mix to, to for how it raises that one gallon uh, uh, point, uh, point 0.3 parts per million so yep there it is that's what I'd recommend that's four grams per liter and definitely you could rec recommend uh, experimenting that with yourself and so yeah I mean it's trisodium phosphate it has a phosphate and it adds a sodium so can increase your sodium a little bit there, but I don't think it's, it's that big of a deal. Uh, but yeah, I did add the, I put feed, but just try, just one P, it's actually the trisodium phosphate. And I and mixed it up using the salt water, so I'm not sure if that's what caused it or whether it was um, just because I added twice the dose actually. So this is twice the concentration right there, and what it, it had a little bit of uh, uh, like, um, um, uh, a con not condensation, but uh, a little bit of, of a cloudiness to the water there that uh, But it seems to be just fine like that though And then I have the the sodium nitrate as well that I've been mixing it up as from the straight sodium uh, nitrate uh, Pellets and yep, so it so, so good so far there And I've also been adding all for reef. So yep, there it is. I also like it because I can mix it up just how I want it with or without the trace elements and like I want it without the trace elements because I'm already adding the the Reef Plus um, by Seachem and that already has a trace element so and one thing that's good about it well I I heard let's see that it's like some people say oh that is it's it's a little um, confusing because you add it and then it takes a couple days for it to break down and for to see the actual results in how much you're alkalinity goes up all I can say is that in, that's in theory but in practice you have absolutely no no problem whatsoever in uh, in trying to you know not really ca ca causing confusion you know as far as just I mean yeah if you add it yeah and immediately test it you know within five minutes within that same day well yeah it won't show up but I test every other day for alkalinity, so I've been doing that for months and months. Have absolutely no problem with just adding it and uh, checking every other day. And yeah, it seems to you know go up to where I want it, and then I I, I stop adding the alpha reef, and it seems to go down to where I want it just fine. So this issue about it um, taking way too long to break down, like oh my god, like it's taking months and months to break down. No, it's just it's just like within a couple of days, so it's really a non-issue. So as far as the practical uh, application of using it, it's absolutely great so far. 
And what I can also say is that, um, see, not, what's interesting is that I am, as far as the phosphates on these systems, it's going down and down, pushing it down so far, I'm adding it and adding it. And so this last time around, I went ahead and, and uh, dosed it all the way up to one parts per million on the phosphate. That's right, I'm a crazy scientist, mad, reefing madness. So I dosed it up all the way to one parts per million on the nitrate, yeah. So good so far, let's check them out. I'm still alive in here. You know, it's better than, than Actually, well, I could go back to adding the, the, the dehydrated chicken manure because um, I think that's actually better than adding just the straight reef forage or just the straight uh, foods. It just it causes more, I've, I've noticed that just a more of a algae bloom cycle when you do that, it's just a much stronger uh, stuff. Whereas you just add the, the nitrate and the phosphate that it just has such a good, um, it just boosts it up and you just go through almost some if, if not not any of the phosphate or I mean of the, the algae blooms so so good so far that's right I'm up to one parts per million on the phosphate and after a week it has in fact went back down to to about uh, 0.6 so I have to see and I expect it just be, it's just on the it just pulls it straight straight down so in theory, add it up to one. It should be enough to go a whole week. And I can see it week by week. I test every week, you know, I can see it go down and down by exactly the same amount. So I know exactly what my nitrate, I mean, what my phosphate is and how much it is in fat consuming every single day. Here's a close shot of the green. Slimer looking pretty good right there. I don't want to give you a whole I'll go through all the names of all of the frags right now, but here they are. They're doing pretty good so far. Um, nitrate, same thing. I've been dosing it up all the way to 20, 20 parts per minute on the nitrate, and it seems like it's been uh, pretty good and that it goes down much, much slower than the phosphate, so much easier to track and to, uh, and to uh, control. So good results there, and I want to mention the salinity on the salinity on these systems. It has been I like to keep it at 35 parts per million on the salinity, and uh, what I can say is that um, when I've been, it seems to be going down on me a little bit, a little bit. So I think I'm saying what is causing the salinity to go down, and so what I did was I added this. Uh, I think it's from just doing the testing, because I test every week, every week, and every time I test it, I pull out, what, it's like three tests, right? So that's, um, plus the alkalinity even more. So I'm pulling out, you know, uh, three milliliters, or at least, you know, maybe, I don't know how many milliliters, like, like five to 10 millimeters per week. So just week after week, it just adds up. So I could, I could see that the salinity starts dropping. So definitely, I test every week on the salinity, um, just to make sure that it's right on along with all of the other, uh, along with the nitrate and the phosphates and the alkalinity. And so one thing I wanna to mention too really quick is what's going on with the um, alkalinity. So, and as far as whether you're, you're, you're adding your, your alkalinity and you're adding alkalinity uh, based on on what your pH is at or what your alkalinity is at, so there's two different um, two different strategies, right? So you add your alkalinity. You normally add your alkalinity. You add it. Um, you test it and you keep it right right where you want it. You see that it goes down and you add more. And so, but there's there's two. Ooh, Kind of easier way to look at it is just where well, you just add your alkalinity based on what your alkalinity is, or the other method would be to add your alkalinity based on what your pH is doing. And so it's not about just what are you, um, what's more important than the other. It's not about uh, what, which one are you are you monitoring, which one are you not monitoring because you, you should know what both are, but. If the key is is completely different things. Is one is you're adding your alkalinity based on on how much the alkalinity is actually going down, and the other method is you're just adding alkalinity based on what your pH is. So if you know, so they're just adding 
I did that for a while manually, but yeah, I mean, um, I was using uh, a pH a, a pH buffer that I don't think it really worked that well. But yeah, if you're just using a straight cockwasser, you know, the recommended method, uh, I believe it's Chris Meckblade that has it, you just using the, just a straight doser using the cockwasser. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this just uh, bumps it up. And, uh, you know, if your pH is low, and then uh, alkalinity tends, yeah, I did that with mine too, the alkalinity went all the way up to like 15 or 16, so without any ill effects. And, uh, you know, the, so you just use your dosing pump to keep the, to keep the, to keep adding the, the cock washer and then the right amounts on the right times and everything. And why not just like to keep it simple? Thus, so far, I haven't had any of the, the dosing pumps on the systems right here. I'm just, adding the alpha reef manually this far so we'll see how it goes and one thing is that some guys if you heard about the the pulsing zinia have you seen in my my previous videos i did remember that i i personally saw some pulsing xenia in the in playa de carbon over there in mexico it's just south of cancun and i did see them in two separate occasions and and also I hear people talking about the, the lionfish as well, that there's these, um, they, they believe that they're introduced uh, species, you know, Pacific species into the Caribbean when, you know, and then right away, of course, they blame the Aquarius. Oh, it's the Aquarius, Aquarius that, that for some reason, you know, they, they always get tired of their pets and they always just, instead of killing them, they decide to just dump them into the wild. That's what people do. Yeah, and, but there's also something that, you know, there's just, I, I think they're just grabbing at straws. They don't have any, any evidence that that in fact is the case. And, and you know, they just, uh, in my, I think it's just much, much more likely that there's, um, like in the in the case of this uh, of the Caribbean, there there's something called the Panama Canal that a lot of people just uh, you know I mean it's a big it's a big uh, possible you know liability. No one wants to to be responsible or to uh, you know or to might be blamed for for such an event. So that these oh Aquarius do it right, but I'm sure that as far as the pan, I'm not an expert. I don't know about the Panama Canal, but I'm sure they have their protocols where they're supposedly uh, have some protections. But I believe that it should be just next to impossible to actually prevent every little thing from getting through the Panama Canal, like you know just getting on the hull of a boat. I'm sure they're certainly not scrubbing down and bleaching out every single ship that goes through there, right? So I'm sure that there's just all kinds of stuff just getting straight through there. Linefish, included, pulsing, zinnia. We're probably going to get uh, purple tangs. We're going to get uh, some regal angelfish just popping up like mad up into the Caribbean here and there in the Florida. Never right, Mandarin there. That's right. We got crazy endo We got crazy... We got crazy, uh, we got craziness, craziness here with all of these crazy Indo-Pacific species coming into the Caribbean. All right, guys. Well, I got that. What else did we got as far as the aquariums? Yes, that's it. We got the quarantine. I got the trisodium phosphate. We got pulsexenius. We got lionfish. Alright guys, well I guess that's it. Happy reefing it. Take you on the next one. Bye.